Let's talk about creating a space for difficult, complicated, important conversations. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Let's Talk About. Um, I am here with my colleague, Joanne Clinton, and she has taken us all the way up to the pandemic uh, in her life, but we are about to get into some, some meaty circumstances here, I would say, and some serious decisions made by Joanne, which also uh, kind of reflect on uh, the things that we've been talking about already, just what connection is like what validation, how important validation is, et cetera, and how, in a lot of ways, just because you may be identified by others mm -hmm. in a certain way doesn't mean that's how you identify yes. yourself and doesn't mean that's how you will allow them mm -hmm. to identify you. So um, you had just gotten up in your, in your, in your narration of uh, what was going on in your life to the pandemic. Yes. So tell us how, you know, obviously there are some things you don't have to tell anybody about how much the pandemic upended our lives, mm -hmm. but it had a particular effect for you. So, yes, uh, it's, it's amazing how things happen. You know, timing is, is the key. Uh, timing is, I have to say the way things laid out in, in certain time, time frame, it signifies the presence of God. Um, just before the pandemic, um, I, my marriage was having its trials and, um, I started looking into separating and needing to find somewhere to live. And this was about the fall of 2019 and we started hearing buzz about some, some kind of flu. I was like, oh, whatever. What's, what's new? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And I, I said to myself, I had, long, I, I had time to myself, I had some time to myself, and I said to myself, I don't want to live here. I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't, you know. And at the time I was, I was working for a management company, Corker Mullins Jensen, um, management company, and I drove a van for um, the elderly f at different different locations. They had they had property in um, Cobble Hill, Somerville, and they had Savin Hill, you know, in Dorchester, and and Millbrook. <laughs> here, really, Millbrook in, in, in here Arlington. in Arlington. Uh -huh. And like a, every other Friday, I ended up out here in Arlington, and it was beautiful. And I was like. I've been to Wilson Farm, and I've been to, to Bedford. There's a mall out in Bedford. And, I've, of course, I've been to the Burlington Mall, you know, taking everybody shopping. Mm -hmm. And um, so, the market excuse basket. Me, excuse me, was, was, that, was that your first time that you had been in yes, this area? Yes, yes. Okay. It was, like, late, um, um, like, the middle of 2019. And I was like, this is beautiful. Then when I started feeling the stress and strain, of, of my marriage, I'm like, I, I think I should separate. And, and as time went by, I'm like, yeah. So one day during a, a break, um, I dropped off the seniors and parked the van, went into the apartments, and I said, I want an application. And this all right, you know, uh, the way it can be, and this is pre-pandemic, the way it can be as much as six months to a year but at the time, the manager said things are moving kind of fast, and I says, "All right." And so I took I took I took the application home. I, I hid it, and um, things were still strained between me and, and my husband. And this is coming around January of, of 2020. 2020. Yep, we're all familiar with that. And date. then I I left. I left, and I I lived with a friend for a while, and then I ended up living with my sister. Um, uh, shortly after that, and then as you know, in March, the hammer came down. Mm -hmm. Boom! The world just stopped. It's like, I'm like, how is this going to work? Not, nobody's going to work. Nothing's moving. Nothing's open. Uh, what? 
you know, we all were in this, this state of shock and confusion and shelter in place. And we all, as we know, it was a two year process of, mm -hmm. you know, of um, social distancing, shelter in place, uh, masking, washing your hands multiple, be, being just being to yourself, you know, and living Pretty right, much was, as a xenophobe, you you you, right. you 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 know you it was forced you know I don't know the term for it being a xenophobe, and but what what came what came out of it was time for me to think about what I wanted mm. because I was forced to think about myself first. Right, you literally were forced into that as we all yes, were by yes, what you've already yes. described. And 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 over time. You know, being involved in Zoom for everything, from doctors to socializing to um, to uh, faith, you know, being involved with the nation. And I'm like, nah, nah, I don't know about all of this. I'm like, I'm not quite sure. But really couldn't make any decisions like to move or do anything because we were, tr we were stuck in that um, in that in pandemic condition. And as the pan as we started to emerge from the pandemic, um, the spring of 2022, I got the response from management saying that I'm number three. Um, and then a month later, I got another response saying, please come in and fill out your application. I, I could have ran from <laughs> Providence all the way up 95, <laughs> you know, and I said, yes. And, and I came here and... April of 2022, um, an amazing summer. Uh, I struggled to find um, employment, and then I found um, a, a position here um, this past this past summer of 23. And over the last two years of living in Arlington, it has been a, it has been an amazing relief, wusa <laughs> transition, and. And it's away from all the the collective pressure of trying to fit in, of of trying to fit the expectations of others, um, defining myself of what others call blackness, of what others call being a woman of color. I'm like, I'm done with all of that, you know. And like I said before, when I interviewed here in that group interview, and we were just talking about being creative, being yourself, um, and being open to learning new things. Something happened in that moment, and I'm like, and I even said it out loud, all those labels that are stuck to me out there in the world, sister, I'm, I'm nobody's sister so-and-so, I'm not a black woman, I'm not, you know, I'm just Joanne, and I can be Joanne here? What? <laughs> Like, okay. And then, and moving away from all of that and questioning, am I doing the right thing? And it's like, okay, never mind all of that. You know, just focus on yourself. And then finding, trying to find connections with other people who think like me, I found um, that there was this movement called the divestment movement, divesting. And I'm like, what does that mean? And and I, I I delved into it, and I and I and this this movement has been going on, you know, since the last three years. So out of the pandemic, and I think a lot of like-minded individuals, we were scattered, didn't know the others existed, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. had the same a lot this, of other this, people the same who mindset. Same path, it's like yep. because I, because we I, we were forced to spend all this time concentrating on ourselves. Excuse me. It's mm -hmm. self care. Start questioning: Is A, B, C, and D worth my time, my money, and my resources? Is it worth it? And the answer, oftentimes, is no. So I'm going to ask you now, uh, again, as a person who ha has, you know, I have been, I have, I have not never been to. Dorchester, Mattapan, Roxbury, other places. Um, I have spent a number of time, a certain amount of time there, but I don't know anything. 
And I'm just assuming our audience, many people don't know much about what's going on there. When you say, is A, B, C, and D worth it? What are you talking about? It's, it's a lot of, as you, as you can see in, in the media and maybe in person, but I've seen in, I've experienced in person, a lot of what goes on in the collective community is highly toxic. It's highly toxic. Um, and, and being in it, someone who was, didn't, wasn't born in it and put in it and living in it and then coming out of it and then to, to, then to be, whew, um, I, I made it out. It's the hood, the, the black community, it's, it's highly toxic. You know, there, there are beautiful aspects of it, the art, the culture, and, and some of the music, not all of it. And, you know, and you can find some genuinely beautiful people. But at the same time, it, it can be highly toxic. Like I, we were talking about, I was talking about a bag of M&Ms. I love M&Ms, you know. But if somebody gave you a bag of M&Ms and said, hey, here, eat as many as you want. But about 15% of them are, are poisonous. Would you eat that bag of M&Ms? I don't think so. That's, that's, that, I don't like those odds. All right. And, you know, being taken advantage of, if you willfully get involved in certain um, social groups or social political groups, and you go into it with the innocence and the faith that we're going to work as a group for this cause, and then come to find out the person needed numbers to create a nonprofit organization, then once they get what they want, they kick you to the curb. So you feel used. And and on a more personal relation and on a more intimate level, uh, as a woman, just not feeling feeling valued. You know, um, pre hijab, before I was wearing in hijab, uh, I remember being followed by strange men. Um, I, and I also had an incident on a bus where I was coming from, from downtown. I was on the SL4 or the 5 going through Dudley Square. And it's a, what, well, what, they always blame the woman. Well, what you're wearing, it makes a difference. No, it doesn't. I had on a pair of eight jeans. I had on a button down shirt. I had on a pair of flip flops and I had my legs crossed and I'm looking out the window and I feel something on my foot and I turn. It's a man from across the aisle rubbing my foot. Yeah. And <laughs> what, do, what do you do in a situation like that? Is there I, even I, lost, you I lost my breath. I was like, the next stop I got off, not stop I wanted, I got off and I was just like, Wow. I I can't, I can't, I can't with this. I, I I can't. And and you know, that was that incident. And just the the things people would say to me, like where are you going, or or can I come along with you, or you know, I like your little wiggle and bounce. That just being bombarded with this mm -hmm. all the time, it it's it wears you it wears you down and. It's like, I, I don't have to stay here. I don't have to live here. I don't. Mm -hmm. You know, is, this is, I, 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 you know, is this, I don't have, I don't, I don't have to subject myself to this, you know. And sometimes I would come home and, you know, express some of my frustrations to my late husband. And that's, that's at, and, and the, even on and after coming into the, into the nation and, and wearing the veil and the hijab, it's it's not it's not that easy, you know, to deal with the fact that yes, people are giving a little bit more respect, but not you're not feeling you're not feeling safe, mm -hmm. you know. Um, 
I guess what I'm trying to say is that incident happened. That was before I was wearing the veil and the full hijab, before I came into the nation. But after coming, I, I came into the nation, I was wearing, you know, the full hijab. And I was a dutiful wife, and we were having dinner every evening on time. And one incident is we're sitting, it was, it was during the Ramadan season. We're sitting, having our, you know, our meal to break our fast by the window. It's a beautiful evening. You can look out and see the, the little, we lived on the first floor. And you can see the nice little lawn and the fence and you can see the street and the cars go by. And we're in the middle of having a conversation and shots are fired. Mm. Right. Right there. Right there. About right there. like 25 feet from the window. And of course, you know what to do. We dropped our food and dove under the table. And then the next day, he, um, he asked for support from, um, from the nation for the, bro the brothers to do, a, um, I forget what it's called, um, do they have a name for it, where they go door to door and let people know that they're there for support mm, and encouragement. Mm, mm -hmm. And I was like, this, this is crazy. Mm. This is crazy. And then we, uh, we, moved, we moved to Ashmont. And it gets a little better, but not much. Mm -hmm. You, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. It gets a little better, but not much. And so. then after a while, it's, you know, being fondled on the bus, being followed by strangers, um, having shots fired just 25 feet from the window that you're, you're sitting at. Uh, and e even sometimes in the morning when I would make my way to the bus stop to go to work, you'd hear it in the distance. It's, it's se it was seasonal. Mm. You know, everybody knows, yeah, the warm weather's coming. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I love the summertime. I've always, I always have loved the summertime. Yeah. You know? So it just wears you down, down. Every, every day. day. It's like. Every day. And. Yeah. And obviously, you know, thinking about the audience here, a, some of what you're saying is something that regrettably most or all women can relate to. Yes. Because it's just men often behaving badly. Mm -hmm. um, but some of it seems very, very specific Yes, to that neighborhood, that collective, as you mm -hmm. said. Mm -hmm. and, he, and, even, and I remember on, on a couple of occasions, um, a couple of years in a row, they'd have the quote unquote, the Caribbean festival, they'd make an announcement that they were closing, you know, the, the Nation of Islam, their mosque, when I was attending that mosque, they were, they were closing the mosque this week, this Saturday. There'll be no activities because of, mm -hmm. quote unquote, the Caribbean festival that always drew. I'm not talking about the festival activities. Mm -hmm. Right. You're talking about the, what, the yep. other stuff that comes along with the toxic yep. attachment, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you know. So for safety reasons or yes. something, they wouldn't yes. open. Not yes. for other, not for respectful of something else yes. going on or something yes. like that. Yes. 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 So, yes. And, and, and I also, I, and I also told you about, you know, when, when, when you when you go into the mosque in the Nation of Islam, everybody gets checked. Even people who've been longtime members, you get checked. You know, you get searched, and your pocketbook gets searched. I have confiscated knives and um, little weird-looking metal objects for weapons, and um, and at, at the end of the service, that you return it back to the to the owner. And I'm like, I'm saying to myself. Sister, you knew you were coming here. Right. What's... What is this? Yeah. So we're, 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 we're running out of time. No, no, no surprise to me because I could... Anyway, I want to make... I want to, I want to ask you about one thing um, about divestment. Divestment, And you yes. said, um, I know because you described it to me, that there is an element in the whole divestment movement that says you get out and you do it silently. Yes. Tell us about that. Um, I applied for my apartment. I got, I moved. And because it was at the end of the pandemic when people were just starting to socialize again, I didn't have to explain anything. People didn't see me for a while. That's fine because because of the pandemic. I was living with my sister in Rhode Island until I got my apart apartment. What I thought would be six months to a year turned into two years, and we all know why. So great. 
And, you know, and then I started thinking, do I still want to keep going to that mosque? The answer was no. And that's when I had my struggles with my faith because I didn't want to go back and forth because it's not worth the time and the effort to, to go back and forth and to, and to keep putting, subjecting myself to these toxic situations. So this was after you had moved to Arlington and now you were having to decide whether you would go back to, the neighbor, to your neighborhood for the, for, to go to that particular mosque. Yes, yes, okay. and, and, and to subject myself to that. And the pandemic was a way out and a way to divest. It was a way to separate myself from the, the collective. And I found a group through social media called the Divestment Movement, and I and I purchased a journal, and it, it helps you helps walk you through your own individual journey of be, just being you. And wherever you go, wherever I go, I'm black, and I'm me, and I'm here. And I'm not saying this means I'm I'm separating myself from the need for black people and people of color to be included to be treat it as equals. I'm not saying I'm separating myself from those things. I'm divesting and separating myself from that collective, quote unquote, black community because I can no longer afford to be exposed to the, the level of toxicity. Mm -hmm. You know, my time, my money, my energy, my resources, I, I, I have to respectfully decline. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's what divestment is the opposite of investment, you know, is I'm not, now I'm intentional, my move was intentional. I could have moved anywhere. I could have moved to Savin Hill, mm -hmm. which, is, which is in Dorchester. I could have, I could have, I could have moved to anywhere, mm -hmm. but I deliberately chose to move to Arlington. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what about that component, though, of silence? Like, why, why would it need to be, because I think that you've, You've explained to me that divestment in, is encouraging you to get out of that situation, but to do so silently. Is that right? Because, you know, the tendency for people to question, mm -hmm. what do you have to explain? Okay. So silence in that case is a way of, hey, if you've made this decision for yourself, that's all you need to know. Yes. You don't need yes. you don't, somebody you don't else need to, to say it's okay. It's, yeah, it, yes, because that's what you're divesting from. Mm -hmm. Somebody else defining you, somebody else giving you permission, some other group of whoever mm -hmm. deciding with you. No, that's what divesting is. No, it's for me and me alone to move on and to just quietly, politely just to mm -hmm. move on. All right, so Joanne, let me ask you in, in kind of wrapping up, here we are now in early spring of 24, mm -hmm. and you've been in Arlington for a couple of years. Yes. And where where does, uh, you know, where does Dorchester, Mattapan, where does that fit in your life, if at all, these um, days? And how about as you Im imagine and envision things going forward? As I get to Roxbury Crossing because of the, the huge mosque that's there, um, the Islamic Society of Boston Culture Center. And that mosque is huge because the community is so vast. Um, it pulls in, you know, um, Roslyn Dale, it pulls in West Roxbury, it pulls in Potter Rock, and even people come from, you know, different areas. Sure. Mm -hmm. They come to, 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 for, for the Juma prayer and for the, the community, it's called the Uma. And that's, that's as far as, that's, that's as far that, as it goes, that's huh? Good. Yeah, and, and, and there's some places um, between um, Mass Avenue and Roxbury Crossing. That's, that's, as, that's as far as it, that's fine. So you'll, you'll go back there for faith reasons or, yeah. for, or for, to, be, to, to, to remain part of that community, mm -hmm. that particular community. But in terms of the wider, the other connections that you have, um, you know, going back over the years that you were living in that area, none of that is going to be strong enough to pull you back in for no. a while. No, and it hasn't been. Mm -hmm. It hasn't and been. And how, how, how do you feel? <laughs> you know, I know that's a silly um, question in a sense, but how, how do you there, feel? There are some people I miss. I still talk to them on the phone. And um, there, are a few, there are a few people that I miss, but then there are 
There's a lot of situations that I don't. And it sounds like overall, mm -hmm. you're good. Like this is yes. this is good. Yes. Yes. And and uh, yeah. So I I I want to obviously uh, you know first of all I said at the outset comfortable space. Let's hope so. Yes. You know, challenging conversations, and definitely mm -hmm. so. I've asked you some pretty pointed questions, and you've given straight answers for sure. So I want to express my appreciation for that. Thank you. Um, and I want to just invite you, like we have a minute or two left. Is there anything that we haven't said, haven't covered, that you, you, you would like you know, people to understand? I, maybe I, I, I just wanted to, to say it out loud for anyone who may view the, the episodes and have an aha moment. Oh, that's what I was, I've been doing? Yes, and it's okay. Um, meaning that's what I've been doing as in like divestment? That's divestment, yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. right. Because yes. again, like you said, you're not even aware that there was of a, this diffused community yes. of women who are, who are actually- Divesting. You know, yeah, moving away. Yes. And uh, you, know, you don't want, you, you want to, them to know what you have found out which is that there's more of you yes, than you might yes, think. Yes, yeah, yes, there and is. And that there is an actual community whether you know each other or not. Yes, but we're all of the same mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, and the culture of the, of the community is you move in silence, it's all about you, um, it's about what you want, it's about your self-preservation, it's about the life you're trying to carve out for yourself and about your identity. Who, who do you think you are? as opposed to allowing someone else or some other group telling you who you are. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. All right, and with that, we will close. I thank you again. Thank you. I have been speaking with my colleague, Joanne, Jan, <coughs> excuse me, Joanne Clinton, uh, in this, the inaugural episode of Let's Talk About, a safe space for tough conversations. We appreciate Joanne's time and her candor and we appreciate you taking the time to join us as well. We hope to see you on a future episode. I'm James Milan. We'll see you next time.